today in the gospel we hear about Satan and we hear about evil and the devil. And I think it's important that we talk about what those words and concepts mean for us as progressive Christians in the 21st century. Now, a few months ago, we talked about how our image of God had changed. That when we were younger, most of us had the image of God as the old white man in the clouds with the long gray beard. And he was kind of like Santa Claus, where he sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. And that's what we thought God was. And then, of course, as we grew and matured along the spiritual path, we've awakened to a higher consciousness. We've come to understand that God is not a person. And in fact, I love Rabbi David Cooper's definition that God is not a noun. God is a verb. God is movement, action. God is breathing the breath of all life. We have also come to understand that God is not someone separate from us, up in the sky. We've come to understand that God is within all creation and that God is within us. That is why Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. The kingdom of heaven is where God lives. So God lives in you. So if our concept of God has changed and matured, we have got to come to a much more mature understanding of what the devil and evil and sin are. I would be shocked if anyone in this room still viewed the devil as the man with the red skin and the horns and the tail and the pitchfork. Okay, we know it's not that. But it's very comfortable for us to view evil as something outside of us. We would much prefer that. And it's why that phrase comes up, the devil made me do it. Because it's outside of us. But the truth is, if evil exists in the world, if hardship and strife and hunger, if all of that exists in the world, it is not because of a devil. It's because of us. And most of us don't want to hear that message, but that is the truth. God gave us free will, which means that we get to choose in this moment. In this moment, I can choose to align myself with my good, with God, with my higher self, or right now in this moment, I can choose to align myself, my thoughts, and my actions and my behaviors with my lower self, with my false self, with my ego. Dr. Wayne Dyer refers to ego as an acronym, and he says it stands for edging God out. That to me is what sin is. When we edge God out, when God is not included in our thoughts, in our actions, in our behaviors, the word sin actually comes from a Hebrew word, which means missing the mark. That's what sin means, missing the mark. Think about a bullseye on a target, um, the center of a dartboard. That center is God. It's the center of your being. Your purpose for being is to align your thoughts and actions and behaviors with that center, to live from that center. But oftentimes we miss the mark and we sin. And what that means by missing the mark is we're not living from that center. When we think thoughts of fear and worry and anxiety and lack and limitation, when we still think that God is somehow separate from us and we're all separate from one another, then we're missing the mark. And if you want a world of peace, the truth of the matter is you have to be at peace within yourself first 
So if you're a person who's always worried and stressed and anxious, you are contributing to their not being peace in the world. That is the truth. And so what we're being called to do is to make sure that our thoughts and actions and behaviors hit the mark, hit the center, that we stay aligned with God. The front cover of our bulletin today says God's will. And God's will for our lives is that we live like Jesus did 24-7, living from that center, living from that alignment with God. When we're not doing that, we're not living God's will for our lives. Oftentimes when we think of sin, we think of something horrendous, like you stole something or you hurt someone. But honestly, when you are worried or anxious or fearful, you're not living God's will for your life. And by definition, that is sin. If there is evil in this world, it is not because of a devil. It is because our thoughts, our choices, our behaviors, our sense of separation from one another and from God lead us to create that world of strife and hardship. Now, many of us grew up in churches where we were told that we were intrinsically bad, that we are sinners, and that we were born in original sin. Jesus never said any of that. In fact, Jesus said just the opposite of that. He said, you are sons and daughters of God. You are the light of the world. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you. God resides within you. That doesn't sound to me like he was saying we were sinners. He was saying we are the light. And that's why I love the words this morning, the words of integration that Greg read for us from Henry Nowen. How beautiful is that? He says, Henry Nowen, that the purpose of our alone time with God, the purpose of prayer and meditation and solitude with God is to remember that we are the beloved. That's our true identity. That's who we really are. We're the beloved. And if everybody on the planet really believed that, then we would live in a world where there would be no evil. Because we would understand that we are the beloved and that everyone else is the beloved as well and we live from that place. In the Lord's Prayer that we say every Sunday here at church, the beautiful prayer Jesus taught us, we say, lead us not into temptation. That's really a poor translation. Jesus spoke in Aramaic. And if you ever look to read what the Aramaic translation of that prayer is, the line isn't lead us not into temptation, it's lead us not into forgetfulness. That's really what Jesus was saying, is that's what sin is. When we forget that we're the beloved, when we forget that we're connected with God, that's, that's what that is. So we need to move past that. So many of us are walking around, like in the gospel today, with an unclean spirit. And what an unclean spirit means to me is that your spirit is not shining, you're kind of dragging, you're worried, you're anxious, you're fearful, you're still holding on to something that happened three years ago. We've got to do some spiritual spring cleaning and get rid of a lot of that mental clutter that's up there. You know, the word clutter has the same root word as the word clot. And if you think about a blood clot, what does it do? It slows down and in some ways, if it's serious, can really stop the flow of blood, the flow of life in your body. Your mental clutter in your head, your worries, fears, anxieties, they are stopping the flow of life, the flow of spirit, the flow of good in your life. 
So we've got to do some spring cleaning and get rid of that clutter. Now luckily in today's gospel, Jesus tells us how to do this for ourselves. This gospel came from Mark's gospel, and there's a typo there in the bulletin. This is from Mark's gospel. And Mark's gospel is a little bit different from the others. Mark begins his account of Jesus' life not with Jesus as a baby. So in chapter 1 of Mark's gospel, there's no angel appearing to Mary and a manger and the three magi. Chapter 1 of Mark's gospel is Jesus is already an adult and he's out in the wilderness. He's spending 40 days and nights alone with God. And what happens to him in chapter 1 of Mark's gospel is that while he is there, he has to wrestle with the devil. He's not wrestling with a guy with a pitchfork and the horns and the tail. What is he doing? What is he doing in the solitude? He is wrestling with his ego. Yes, Jesus had an ego. He was a human being. Jesus was wrestling with those voices saying to him, you can lead life this way. You can do this. This is who you should be. Jesus has to wrestle with those voices so that he can hear the voice of God and learn what God's will for his life is, not what those other voices are telling him. And once Jesus wrestles that devil, once he overcomes that and starts to hear the voice of God and live fully from that, he is given the power to heal. And what happens? In chapters 1 and 2 of Mark, right away at the beginning, he's healing people left and right. He heals the leper, the woman with the fever, the man with the withered hand, all these people with unclean spirits. Because Jesus has healed himself. And now he has the power to heal. Jesus told us all of the things that he did, we could do. These and greater, which means you have the ability to clean your spirit. But you have to do what Jesus did. You have to go out into the wilderness. You have to wrestle with those voices that are telling you, this is how you should live. This is who you should be. This is what your purpose is. You have to wrestle with those so that you can really hear what the voice of God is, what your purpose is. Now, we had a very powerful demonstration of this this week. This week, the world welcomed warmly and celebrated the birth of Caitlyn Jenner. Caitlyn Jenner stepped into her truth and did you feel it? Did you feel it that day when you were on social media and the pictures came out? There was two, there were two million people who immediately became followers on Twitter of Caitlyn Jenner and gave this great outpouring of love to someone who was stepping in to their truth. As Caitlyn Jenner transformed our world becomes transformed. Because as each of us steps more fully into our truth and lives more fully in alignment with God's plan for our lives, we not only heal ourselves, but we heal the world as well. And that's why Jesus finishes today's gospel saying, those who follow God's will, God's plan for their lives, they are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. Because we're all connected in that regard. That's what we're all here to do.